We're continuing our studies in Chapter 13 on Glucose Metabolism, and in this lesson we'll be looking at Phase 2 of Glycolysis. Here's an overview of those five steps. Remember our final product will be pyruvate. We're starting with glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. In the first step we're going to oxidize carbon number 1 and add a phosphate. In step 7 we're going to remove that phosphate to make ATP. In step 8 we're simply going to move the phosphoryl group from carbon 3 to carbon 2. In step 9 we dehydrate the molecule. And in our final step we remove that last phosphate to make ATP. What we have illustrated here are the substrates and products and enzymes for each step for single reaction. But remember, our products in from phase 1 were two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So our products have to be multiplied by 2 if we want to indicate the energy gain from one molecule of glucose. Let's look at these individual steps. In step 6, we're going to oxidize carbon number 1 and add a phosphoryl group. Here's glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, and let's keep in mind that final product. By comparing those two molecules, you can see I need to do some chemistry around each of those three carbons. And in this step, I'm going to start with carbon number 1. I have an aldehyde group, but I need to get a carboxyl group. So I'm going to oxidize carbon number 1. That will give me the other oxygen that I need. I'm also going to add a phosphoryl group. Now in this case, the phosphoryl comes from inorganic phosphate, so there's no more ATP cost. This is the energy payoff phase, not energy investment, so it doesn't cost me any more energy in this case. In the process, since I'm oxidizing the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, I'm reducing NAD plus to form NADH. Remember, that represents another form, as it were, of stored energy. The standard delta G is slightly unfavorable, but we're going to pull it forward by the next reaction. It's still a near equilibrium reaction, and therefore we have the double arrows indicating that it's reversible. So we recover energy in the form of NADH. We also have a certain amount of stored energy in that phosphoglycerate, as we'll see in the next reaction. In step two of the energy payoff phase, that is step 7 overall, we're going to remove that phosphoryl from position number 1 and transfer it to ADP to make ATP. This is referred to as substrate level phosphorylation. That is, we're making ATP at the level of the substrate. We'll see a distinction between this and oxidative phosphorylation when we get to chapter 15. And remember, everything is times 2 in terms of our products. So we started with one molecule of glucose in phase 1, and it cost us two molecules of ATP to get through those five steps. In this single step, we generate two molecules of ATP per one molecule of glucose. So we've already recouped our initial investment. The standard delta G is very favorable, and that helps to pull step 6 forward, which is slightly unfavorable. Overall, in the, the actual delta G is pretty close to equilibrium, and so we have the double arrow readily reversible reaction. This is a good example of coupling a favorable with an unfavorable when they happen in rapid succession. So we recover some energy in the form of ATP. And we've accomplished our goal of creating our carboxyl group at position number 1, and so now we can go on to do some chemistry around carbon 2 and 3. First, in step 8, we're going to move that phosphoryl group from carbon 3 to carbon 2. We need that to be in, at that position for the chemistry in the next step. You might think that we'd start with the 3-phosphoglycerate and simply transfer that phosphoryl group from the number 3 carbon to the number 2 carbon. However, it's actually accomplished by an enzyme that starts phosphorylated at a histidine residue. So in this case, the histidine and the enzyme itself is illustrated by the, in the shaded in the blue here. It starts out phosphorylated in the active site, and that phosphoryl group is transferred to carbon number 2 on our molecule. So we have a bisphospho intermediate. Then that histidine extracts the phosphate from position number 3, and we regenerate the original form of the enzyme, but we successfully 
essentially moved that phosphoryl group, even though the source was a little bit different. This is readily reversible, double arrows. And we've accomplished our goal of moving that phosphoryl group for the chemistry in the next step. Step 9, we're going to dehydrate the carbons 2 and 3. That is, we're going to remove a hydrogen from carbon 2 and an OH from carbon 3. So it's a dehydration reaction and we create a carbon-carbon double bond. The active site on the enzyme enolase has a magnesium ion that coordinates with that hydroxyl group on carbon number 3 and that makes it a better leaving group and makes the chemistry possible. So we need this uh, enol form for our final product for step 10. This again is a readily reversible reaction. Here's our final step. We're going to remove a phosphate to make ATP and form our final product, pyruvate. There are actually two parts to the reaction. The first part is illustrated here. We're going to remove the phosphoryl group from phosphoenol pyruvate and that would represent a favorable change in delta G. However, we're going to add that to ADP to make ATP, another example of substrate level phosphorylation. And that's creating more order and is highly unfavorable. And so when we sum these two together, we have an unfavorable standard delta G. But remember, there's this only one part to the reaction. In part two, we tautomerize enol pyruvate to form our final product, pyruvate. Remember, tautomerization simply involves the shift of a hydrogen atom. We're moving it from the hydroxyl group on carbon number two to the methylene group on carbon number three, and now we have our final product, pyruvate. That tautomerization represents a stabilization and releases a considerable amount of energy, and that's what's going to drive the synthesis of ATP overall. So our net standard delta G is very favorable. Remember, this is the third and last of our possible control points, large favorable changes in delta G, an irreversible reaction. Of course, we recover energy in the form of ATP, and for one molecule of glucose, two molecules of enol pyruvate to form pyruvate, we get two molecules of ATP. So remember, in phase one, our cost was two molecules of ATP per molecule of glucose, and we netted two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. When we send both of those through phase two, we gain four molecules of ATP. And so overall, the net gain in the pathway is two molecules of ATP. In the next lesson, we want to see how the glycolytic pathway is regulated, and we'll see it's not regulated the same in all species.